I just drink wine. Are we rolling? Sweet. Welcome to the wine situation. Welcome to the wine situation. Where we take your wines with H's and pair them with wines without the kind we prefer. Wines with eyes. If the wines have eyes. If the wines have eyes. <laughs> it's like that horror movie. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I'm, um, I'm actually getting over like a chest cold, so I feel like my voice is very deep and very movie-esque. It's, it's extra sexy. I just always sound like this. Are you just saying that? I, or no, does it not sound sexy? So no, now I, I feel I like, like it, it doesn't sound sexy. Well, when you try and make it sounds sexy that that's sean sounding sexy all the time whether he has a chest cold or not that's my life story my life mm, too much sex <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah and trying uh, to sound sexy when you have a chest cold but you i mean you're sexy when you whisper too because you're the wine whisperer oh, it, ellen it's true thanks all the wine knowledge in the world from opening covell and working with greg condes mm. and whispering wines to people so they know what to drink and you're so smart that little brain of yours which is full of knowledge about vines and grapes and places because you studied tests and mm. got your books out i did study the test i learned nothing else then. <laughs> just what i needed to know to no that's not true i still read too much dorkily <laughs> just hanging out with my books late at night nerd yep. way to read you nerd okay <laughs> oh no you guys i made ellen cry Aww. i didn't mean i think it's my chest cold um, i think it's my voice we're also we're very excited because we're, we're gonna add a new segment to the show today oh, that's it's right. a surprise yeah. new we'll, segment. we'll get there but first i think we should introduce yeah. our Speaking of books and writing lots of things, we have the amazing Stan Zimmerman sitting here. Now I have to be all sexy, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Get up without, get up without a chest sure. cold. Yes. <laughs> Clearly you haven't been yeah, listening yeah. to the show. We yeah. only have the sexiest guests. I love mm-hmm. that. That's why you're invited on the show, because you're so sexy. Well, he is super sexy. That's true. The first time I met him, I was like, who's that sexy guy? <laughs> Do you remember where? Casita del Campo. There you go. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm good. I what love show Casita. Was it? Do you even I remember? forget what show it was. Down, down in the, the Cavern Club? Yeah. yeah, down in the Cavern Club. In the bowels. Of the, oh, guess, the yeah. famous. Where now they actually do Golden Girls. They do. They've ah. done a couple of my episodes. Look at that segue yeah, right into very good. the oh. writer from the Golden Girls. It's very difficult to watch sometimes your scripts being performed because they do make fun of them. It's so fantastic. It's yeah. four guys in drag. Drew doing Drogi those does one of our former guests. And he Sam does. Pancake and mm-hmm. just a great Jackie cast. Beat. I love Jackie oh, Beat. Oh, cool. And Sherry Vine. Yep. And so they do the exact words that we wrote. And sometimes, like uh, the episode with the flu, where they all got the flu. It's not one of my favorite episodes. And sometimes we had some, you know, you bring up references that now I don't even remember who these people are. Yeah. But at the time, uh, I guess they were funny. I don't know. You so, have no recollection. And there are, the whole place is laughing. I'm going, I didn't mean to write that line, but and there are really good <laughs> hey, episodes that you know. I like. And then it's more oh. fun to go. But I think they're doing a new show. They are. Yeah. They're yeah, doing so a new episode in middle of August, I yeah, think. Yeah. So run there because it's really fantastic. Is it one that doing. you wrote? No, I don't think so. Mm. Otherwise, they would have notified me. And there was a, a Golden Girls puppet parody that I went to in oh uh, this Golden Girls thing has actually gone crazy. Right. Um, yeah. Lately, it's had well, it's kind of riding this other with the new Betty way. White mania of the last five ten to, five ten yeah. five to ten. Yeah. yeah. She's been riding this because she made a couple movies, didn't she? Yeah. Do, was it the proposal or something where it brought her kind of back into mm-hmm. the mainstream? And, and that was yeah. like early two thousands, yeah, I think. Yeah. Like oh, so the puppet parody was in New York, which uh-huh. was really funny, and they people walking around with puppets, and you see them, and they're doing the voices of all the different characters, and they had the kitchen, and that was fun. I went and I did a little Q&A uh, before the show. And then I was just two Fridays ago at D23, Disney Expo, like everything oh, yeah. Disney. Insane at the Anaheim Convention Center. And just people in lines waiting to buy Disney crap. I mean, uh, Disney wonderful things, I guess. <laughs> and because um, Disney owns Golden Girls, so they had this oh, really cute. So they what own is that? You. They own me. Yes, they do. Was that, wait, was that ABC? Or no, what? it was NB- they... NBC. And then, but um, they just bought it? They just own it? I don't know the, how they got mm. a hold of it or maybe the deal with with, with Thomas yeah. must have been bought out by Disney. Huh. So they had this really cute panel uh, with a rattan set. You know, oh my gosh. There's this huge room of like over 1,600 people came wow. and it was really a fun afternoon. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good segue into your wine with an H. Yeah. Do you want to tell us what your wine with an H is? Oh, what you yeah. want to wine about? Because if you, if you, if you wait, where's the bottle? Uh, you, no, no we can't wine. give I'm you. I'm hiding it. Wine. I'm hiding it. Until. I see. No, you wanted my wine. We can't give you wine uh, until, until I wine. Right. Okay. So. I think I wine a lot, but I don't. I have a whiny <laughs> Never voice. Never too much don't for I? the show. Yeah. I'm going to whine about this wonderful pilot script that uh, I wrote with James Burke called Silver Foxes, uh-huh. and it's kind of a, a gay men's Golden Girls, and it's not a reboot and people are like freaking out online. How can you steal the show and the script? And like, it's just inspired. But I wrote the Golden yeah. Girls. 
say? It's not, it's but the, and one day, one night, I got into one of those holes online Uh-oh. where you just, I commented, and then all these people. Anyway, so um, we had this amazing epic read in my living room with George Takei from Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Aww. And Big Leslie Lovely. Jordan. I did not know them at all. I cold called them, and I said, we are having a reading. I haven't written the script. Here's who I am. Here's what the story is. And they all said yes. And, and Bruce Valanche and Todd Sherry from, you know Todd? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Yeah. From Parks and Rec. Awesome. And then the lesbian power couple next door in the script was played by Daniel Gaither from Mad TV and Sherry O'Terry from SNL. Amazing. And Melissa Peterman from Baby Daddy and Reba was um, in it as well. Did you film this? No, we should have. Oh, you should have filmed uh, this. I had writer friends and we were going to punch up the script and it went great. And now we have found that not one network will read the script. What? Why? Not what? even a producer will give it to a network to read the script. Why? Here we go. Here we Here go. Here Here's the wine. Here we go. Let's, let's cheers. Cheers, cheers to, to, to breaking this wine. Yes. Oh my cheers. God. There was one particular keyword that gave us the inspiration for the okay. wine. You wanted to wine about age. ageism yeah. and <laughs> homophobia. Oh, that was so loud and so beautifully loud. She was, was conducting. Was just conducting, and there I was. Uh, I feel like I'm at the Hollywood Bowl it now. Pulled from my yeah. ears. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, unfortunately, that is a problem. And I've literally had emails come in or people say it to my face that the characters are too old. <sighs> and they think wow. that only old people will watch it. And I, I just tell them. And you're Golden like, trust Gr- me, Golden yeah, Girls. girls. <laughs> Look at Golden Girls. Right? It was watched by little kids, people in college, the whole age up to through my grandparents. The whole family. Everyone. Yeah. So I think this could as well. Other people have said, well, it's 99% characters LGBTQ. I'm like, and? Yeah. I think it's really fear because there's never been a show like this that failed. So you can't even right. say, well, that didn't work. Right. It's really fear. In this 2017, what would it hurt to give the head of NBC, here's the script? Well, like Grace and Frankie, too, the two main characters are uh, old yeah. as yes. well. You know, but like, that had Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. Right. I really feel our only hope is to go to like a Hulu or Netflix or yeah. Amazon. Mm. So we're kind of having a campaign to tell them. And Hulu is streaming Golden Girls, and it's been this crazily successful show for them. Yeah. And it even shocked them how much it is. So I'm hoping that one of those places will take a shot and have some guts and, and put it on because I think it will really resonate. For sure. So well, why did you pick this? So why did we pick this wine, yeah. Ellen? Because it's we, really old. Well, it is from 2001. We wanted a wine that sometimes gets ignored by people and that also gets beautiful with age, yet yet retains everything that you love about its youngness, but gets just better with age, which would be a Riesling. A Riesling. I love Riesling. Mm-hmm. This is uh, C.H. Bear's 2001 Erdener Treptin Spätlese from the Mosul. Wow, Ellen, that was so sexy. Say that three times fast. I know, the way you just Erdener did that was Erdener Treptin so... Spätlese. <laughs> <Spetlese. laughs> that I was only it... once. I can't I can't say it much more than that. That was beautiful. But uh, like Riesling. like a spy movie. Like, that would be the, the code words, right? Yeah, exactly. Erdener yeah. Treptin Spätlese. Erdener is the village. Treptin is the vineyard. Spätlese is the level of sugar ripeness of the grape when they picked it. Yep. Mosul's the region. Mm-hmm. That's exhausting. All that. It's, exactly. so it's exhausting. exhausting. Yeah. yeah. And it's also like one of the most aged white wines. Riesling. Riesling, Riesling yeah. Wow. Especially from like Mosul and Germany and stuff. Why, it, why is that? Well, the acidity, like one of the beautiful things that makes Riesling so beautiful is that even though it has like a little bit of residual sweetness to it, the acid's so high, it just cuts through it so that it remains bright. And acid is one of the things that sort of helps a wine age, keep its freshness yeah. um, over the years. And with Riesling, in particular, it gets like, well, this actually would lead into our new segment. Should we oh, do yeah. That? Should we do our new segment now? You guys, What's in the glass? <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of our new segment. What's in the glass? <laughs> What's in the glass? What's in the glass? What's in the glass? <laughs> we realized we give a lot of technical information and we don't usually stop with our guests and like so that you guys listening who might care to know what we're slurping up here, yeah. so you imagine along with us or, or you maybe would be inspired even more to go out and find what we're drinking and try it yourself. So we went to do a new segment where we all take a minute and we say, hey, what do I see? What do I smell? What do I taste? And what's in the glass? And also, too, it encourages people at home to stop and think about what they're drinking and examine it for a second. Shall we do it? I 
good. Is there like a particle in there? No, uh oh, there's a particle? No, there's no particle. Well, I mean, you're like, you're like, I found a button and yeah. a paper clip, and look, it's a Pikachu. Okay. The goblets aren't the best for analyzing yeah, size. Yeah, it's a little no, tough. And this is definitely what we would call lemon gold yellow. What's that called yeah. when it goes down? The, the tears? Oh, yeah. the legs? The tears of yeah, the legs. I never knew anything about wine. It was like red and white. And then I took a trip up to Guerneville and oh, yeah. River, and that was one of the first times. I was like, because you know you're just sipping and yeah. spitting. And I was like, oh, these are the different tastes mm-hmm. of it. But mm-hmm. recently I feel it's like celebratory. It's um, Can be. something special. It's something yeah. It is. I I love it. Riesling is also like a wine lover's wine. People that are really into wine really love Riesling because it can become so nuanced and the care that goes into it and the flavor profile. I think it has a lot to do with the acidity that winemakers really, really enjoy. We like to get controversial. People think, oh, I don't like Riesling. It's sweet. And it's like, yeah, it can. And we love nothing more than to contradict people who are like, you haven't tasted all Riesling. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. To be like, no, Riesling is actually a very diverse group of wines. That's what you always say. Is it sweet? Right. Order it. But well, most people. It's not I mean, always, well, why it's did not they get that? They need like a new PR firm or something, right? They do, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, actually, typically, Rieslings were sweet because as they would ferment, it would get really cold and fermentation would stop. And so sugars would stay high. So the wines were sweeter. But what also, started, the Germans are really good at stopping the fermentation, fermentation early. Yeah. So stopping it, a lot of things. There. We won't get oh into that. <laughs> there we go. Oh They're very strict. Oh okay. They're very strict with their wines. Yes. I've been to Dachau, by the oh. way. Oh. That's a whole other. Topic, but anyway, <laughs> that's a whole, yes. that's a whole other podcast. Yeah. Well, now that we've looked at our wine, okay. let's all take a smell here. Ooh, let's smell it. Another thing about Rieslings when they age is they get those petrol notes, which you get a little petrol. bit here. Ethanol. That's the main nose marker for Riesling is ethanol and petrol. Yeah, I love it. It's so stanky, so good. But I also get a little white crayon. <laughs> white crayon? <laughs> No, I like just a, made that one up, guys. Like a Crayola? Um, yeah, like a I, get, I get like a waxy you get crayon, crayon vibe, but I get nothing else but just the wax. Does that make sense? I don't get any sort of hint of color. I just get a really clean wax smell. Hmm. I get a like, lot of like the a honey. vapid wax smell. You get a lot of honey. The, yeah, the honey honeycomb. A little bit of a little bit of gas. Stan, you want to chime in on this at all? Glass I'm smelling, or is it the <laughs> <laughs> these glasses are not the best for the for first smell, parts yeah. of yeah the smell? They don't really circulate. Well, let's get to sipping. Yeah, let's smell get to sipping. I just did that. Whoops. Oh, it's no. like a clean smell. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, so the acidity we're speaking of, if you take your fingers and put them kind of like right by your... Salivary glands? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was trying to think of another way. Well, not everyone knows. They're in the very back of your mouth, kind of on either side of your tongue, and you kind of like take a sip and you sit there, and then all of a sudden you feel the flood of... <laughs> this sounds so gross, yeah. but it's one of the things that you can do to analyze how high an acidity is. And at, like most Rieslings, this has a delicious, delicious acidity. Delicious acidity. Yeah, Rieslings are a lot about the balance of acidity with sugar okay. and those two things. And also sugar helps with aging too because it's kind of a natural preservative in that way. I would definitely call this off sweet or medium sweet. Yeah, like Halbtrocken? Yeah. What does it say? Does it say Trocken on it? I doesn't say Trocken or Halbtrocken because this is a product cut spine so they don't have to, oh, they don't have say, to say that. It. But That's they do right. say Spetlaise. So there are six levels for a product cut spine which is sort of the highest level of wine in the Germany wine <laughs> ranking labeling system. Which is what we're drinking. You're welcome, Stan. How yeah. come you have coasters and I don't. You want a coaster? Don't, oh, you, you, you could have a coaster. There's, yeah, there's an orange one right there. Or a pink one. You have choices. Like the orange one. Yeah, so there's six levels of, of sugar ripeness that they pick grapes at. The first is Cabernet, then comes Spetlese, then Oslese, then Trocken Oslese, then Eiswein, then Trocken Beer and Oslese. No, wait. Cabernet, <laughs> Spetlese, Oslese, Beer and Oslese, Eiswein, Trocken Beer and Oslese. That's wow. the last one. These are like mental gymnastics of wine right here watching this. And the wines can be, if they're there's a new modern system of labeling that's like self-appointed producers, the VD, what are they? The VDP? Yeah, the VDP, the Verben Deutscher Pratikatswein, and they sometimes will label things trocken or halbtrocken to make it easier for the modern person to know whether they're going to get something sweet or not because despite the fact that Cabinet has less sugar at picking than Spetlaise, sometimes you'll get a Spetlaise that has been fermented to a point of being drier than a Cabinet, so mm-hmm. it's really hard to like you can look at the alcohol level and sometimes that'll be a guess because the higher the alcohol, the more it's been less sweet it's going to be but yeah that's Germany, what I was just looking at this one so yeah confusing. I was looking at this one and it's 8.5% alcohol so you know there's a lot more sugar in it than there is it feels alcohol. It tastes sugary it's yeah. a little more sugary than other recent yeah. had. and yeah. also and as, and as a tasting note too sugar is more of a texture than it is taste so people are like I don't like sweet wine but sweet wine refers to the actual texture of the liquid the viscosity of the liquid as opposed to a taste in terms of like fruitiness is 
where you want to think more when you're describing flavors of wine. You want to go like, it tastes like hay. Like to me, this tastes like golden honey hay or straw or something. I get, I get all that. the orange blossom. I get the orange blossom too. Yeah, for sure. Orange blossom and the honey. Stan, you want to throw out any descriptors? <laughs> yeah. You're just looking what? over there. He's just smiling. Sorry. It's so good. What's in your glass? What, <laughs> do, you, your what, glass, what do you taste? Because everyone tastes I'm different things. I'm seeing a things. hayride party somewhere in Europe. Oh, I yeah. I like it. That's what I'm picturing. A little hayride party? Yes. And, um, hayride. Little girls in skirts. And I was going to ask mm-hmm. if there were lederhosen. Yeah, something like that. And like um, chalices. I appear. taste the lederhosen. It does taste European for some yeah. reason. It's taking me to Europe. It's super European. Yes. Yeah. Is that Why am I thinking that? Because it's from Germany. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Because it's, it's from Mosul. It's from Mosul, Germany. Yeah. So right are the there Mosul California? Uh, there must be, Riesling. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And what, what are those like? It how, depends, how do they differ? It depends on the winemaker. It depends on where it's done. They can be done in the similar way. Well, you get less, well, because they don't age them as much here. So you don't yeah. get the petrol. You get a lot more stone fruit. I tend to get a lot of apple and like pear and ones. And maybe yeah. a little bit of floral, but less of the, this has all the honey and the orange blossom. And also I think they ferment them drier here usually. That's or true. not usually, but they're less likely to make them super sweet, I think. And less likely like cold, like ferment them or like or like in stop fermentation like they do right. in Germany. Do you know Davis Benham, a winery? No. Where's that? Mm-hmm. It's been, I remember we stopped in there. I thought in it, I thought it was David Burns. Uh, and oh, so yeah. we're drinking and <laughs> we're like, cool. talking heads. This is cool. Uh, this is great. I'm buying a case and we get the case uh, and we throw it in the back and it's like, it's not David Burns, it's Davis Benham. It was Benham. really tasty. I was with... Where in California was that? It, I was up uh, in, Russian Russian River. Yeah, in the Russian River. Oh. And we stayed in a place that was a big barrel room. It was like, oh, I guess wow. they had made wine in there at some point. And I was with a boyfriend at time. <laughs> and, uh, and with a friend from college and she was eight and a half months pregnant with her girlfriend. Uh. So everyone thought we were with the other uh, couple. Uh, and we had a designated driver. So that was good. really that's good. Really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, so I love it up there. I'm I need to get back. There. Yeah, I yeah. need to go back. It's great. It's very different gone. now. Why it, is it different? Just because the whole wine industry has really made the whole area like very, very popular. A lot of people are going up there okay. and making whole like wine trips. Let's sell the script, Stan. And okay, then we'll go and down do a wine, wine trip. trip. I would yeah. love that. I need to do that again. Yeah, right. Yeah. I did go with my mother. She used to live in Santa Barbara. So what's the place with the... Oh, you like Paso Robles? With, with the movie. Um, oh, Sideways. Sideways, yeah. yes. So we went to that restaurant. Solvang? Yeah. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah, that Solvang was really that. tasty. Yeah. yeah, the whole Sideways tour. Yeah, I know everyone does that. Is that mm-hmm. too cheesy? I, I, no. I don't You've never know. done it? I, no, I haven't been up briefly. was just north. <laughs> but we weren't doing wine touring or tasting. Paneros? No, it was in Sonoma. You don't wine taste wherever you go? <laughs> I, I would think you would. <laughs> I'm wine tasting right <laughs> now. Yes. We did go to one wine tasting room. I'm not remembering what it was called. It was we. Mm-hmm. I was there with a then uh, boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I heard that Always story. The boy, yeah. the Always the then boyfriend. Then, yeah. <sighs> one wine tasting and they're gone. Right. right? That they, was... <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't we keep did up basically with break you. up on the trip. Oh, home, okay. so. oh, oh, that's right. Oh, Let this be a lesson to you guys. Memories. If you're going wine tasting, look no. out. Your relationship might be ending. I had another good two, three years out of it. Okay. Let's not, not blame good. wine on that. Mm-hmm. No. Probably wine kept us together longer, I think. Mm. Now, was this in the 90s or was this... Before you were born. Was it? No. Well, I'm just curious about when you were writing Golden Girls yes. and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. like, a mere child. Yeah, you were. Like, uh, you were I don't even know how that's possible because. Like, if you don't mind me asking, like, how old were you? I was just out of college. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, it was our first and, big, big job. And you were and able was, to channel middle aged women? Uh, isn't that crazy? Right. Uh, older women. We did a reading of it. Were you there at the uh, Celebration Theater? It was a benefit. I and think so, the yeah. The cast of yeah. Hot in Cleveland oh, yeah. read my first script, and it was surreal. Yeah. Betty White would not do the Betty White part. She had to play B. Arthur. Which I'm sure oh my God. there's a lot of psychological. I was going not on there that. for that. I wish I was. Oh, oh. It, was it, it was quite a wonderful evening, but it was shocking to me. It was a very out of body experience because I listened to it and I thought, how did I, as a young man, right. think to write? It was all about Rose, Betty White's mother, came to visit and she treated her like an old lady and not like a human being. Right. I was like, why did I even think or hear or know that? And right. it was really cool to, it was like a different person. Do you remember uh, feeling the age difference though when you were that young and writing for these older people? I always. I always like writing for women, and I mm-hmm. I had a very vocal grandmother, mother, and sister. So we do rely listen. on younger men to speak for us. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I, can, I couldn't resist. I'm yes. sorry. Younger no. gay men. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It makes it okay. <laughs> that makes but it okay, yeah. back in the 
day when we were writing, there yeah. were very few women right. on staff of shows. I've worked on a lot of TV shows where it was all white male room, and we were in the closet. We could not say wow. that we were even allowed to be gay. You were not allowed to be out. We were told by our agents to bring a woman to any event with the show. So we'd come back after the weekend, and they'd be like, hey, what did you do? And I'm like, I can't say, oh, I went oh. to like a gay bar in West Hollywood. Yeah. You know. Wait, so in Golden Girls, were you yes, in the closet? Oh, yes, gosh. it was only Estelle Getty that took us back around the side, and she said, you know, you're one of us. And, um, <laughs> I thought she meant Jewish, but she meant gay. Yeah. And uh, I'll, keep, I'll keep it a secret. How many gay writers were there? Just me and my writing partner. Just you and I mean, writer. later on, they started hiring, like Mark Cherry came on the show years later. Right. How do we get onto that subject? Oh, so I would have to be the person in the room to say, like, you know, I think that's a sexist line or wow. a racist line or because wow. there was no one there to kind of stand up and go, you know, or can we give the female character more of a description than just she's pretty? Yeah. <laughs> like, who is she? Yeah. They still I mean, can. They, yeah. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I teach a lot of audition classes and I get the descriptions and I'm like, um, can we please have something more on that character? Right. He's an actor who reads the breakdowns daily, yeah. which no matter what the description is, to say, but beautiful or it's always like this, yeah. this, Smart, this. but beautiful. <laughs> but surprisingly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's always like Smart, surprisingly, you, you cannot be both if you're a woman. It's not allowed. No, you can. You can. You can. Uh, but now <laughs> it's great because there's it's such... It's getting better. No, there's yeah. diverse writers on staffs and yeah. that's really, really great. And but then, it's really interesting to me, like as a young gay man, you really were championing the voice for women. Yeah, that's cool. And I feel like a lot of gay men are really closer with their mothers a lot of times and yes. they understand and they see things because they have to be able to navigate a straight world. So they see things and they are much more empathetic, typically. I love how you describe that. Uh, I'm going to steal that and use it. No, in the, please, in please the next do. Next podcast, I do. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I, I mean, but like that's. I mean, it actually, it. it's so great to hear, and it, it makes me realize that what you contributed had such a relevant effect to the success of the show and why it's still standing as it is right now. Well, is because I feel like it spanned time, and those jokes are still funny. I know some of them were, you know, of the time, yes. but a lot of them were just interpersonal and had to do with relationships, relationships. And came from truth and I saw my mother go through a really messy divorce and I saw her retreat into her bedroom and close the shades and go under the covers and as right. her gay son I wanted to figure out what it was and how could I make her laugh and get her out of it come mm -hmm. on so that was and listen to her and, yes. uh, not that young I was like six, 15 16 yeah. when she went through that wow. yeah. and that's but young I've enough about but that's, it. yeah young enough that it would affect you and old enough that you could be there for her in a way that like a kid that she was still be raising, I would think, would not be able to. But scared be. for as well, and very being a sensitive and an yeah. artist and right. all of that at that point. And so I've used that a lot, and she knows it. Yeah. <laughs> different. She, I think she likes it, actually. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So did you see ageism act up in the same way during that time? Um, or was it different? Because it was like family shows. So we were trying to make it shows was family for shows, family. but as we said on the panel two weeks ago, we as a writer could never have pitched Golden Girls and sold it. It initiated at NBC, and they had the idea they had Miami oh. Vice at the time right. and someone came in and said I think it might have been Brandon Tartikoff and said how about Miami Nice <laughs> with these old ladies and so they <laughs> would nice. every no writer way. that yeah. came in they would pitch them and everyone's like I don't know I don't know no no and then Susan Harris wow. uh, came in and, and uh, heard it and she came up with the characters and so I think because they started the ball rolling right. you could get it going but couldn't you know even like Gilmore Girls right. you could I, we tried to pitch Gilmore Girls type shows we cannot sell it no one will buy it um, so even even that got on as a flute, and but look at the success of that. But did you see the the tone change from Golden Girls to Roseanne when you're working on Roseanne? Was that much more of an open vibe? Oh, uh, in terms of being yes. a gay man, uh, yes. Then yeah. people were we were allowed to be out, and right. then Tom Arnold would would run through the halls and say, "Where are my gay guys?" Meaning me and Jim, we were the gay writers, and, he would, <laughs> and Eric, were, Eric too, Eric Gillen, but yeah. he was he was not out at the time. Oh, and I, sorry, yeah. Eric. All right, now he's out. Uh, <laughs> I would look at him and I'd say, "Come on, you can do it." Yeah, we'll walk you through it and he, he would he just wasn't there yet and wow. that, that's you know i mean you are where you are right so um yeah that was interesting <laughs> um, that's crazy but and then we got to write the lesbian kiss episode and mm -hmm. that was a whole controversy and the network wouldn't allow us to have two women kissing on tv and i would come home at night and see it 
on the 11 o'clock news and ABC just refused. And luckily, Tom and Roseanne said, if you don't air it, first they said that we can't film it. She goes, we're filming it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they said, if you won't air it, then we will buy the show back and buy time on HBO and put it on. We're putting oh. it on. Wow. And God bless them that that's they cool. really stood. And this was wow. before Ellen and, and yeah. Will Grace and all of that. Yeah. And that's and they were like, they did not want to be embarrassed. And they said, all right, we'll put it on. <laughs> People and, buy the <laughs> show back. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean that episode back. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Air it. And but we did not know till that night whether it was going to air completely or whether the network was going to re-edit it. And and they did. And we had a huge benefit for Glad that night mm-hmm. in, in West Hollywood. And there was a room of like hundreds of people in CNN was there yeah. covering it. I just remember going up in a roar because we had never seen anything like that on on television. And, right. And to see her character, a straight woman, you know, what does that mean? And, and right. did I like it? And, and mm-hmm. how it affects other people. And I mean, I love that show because it was so real and raw. And um, and you know, I was in Moscow. Oh, um, that's right. Oh, this is 2015. Yeah, there, wine them. in Moscow. You should do a whole show on that. Finding yeah. good wine there. Um, <laughs> what? Vodka. Okay. Yeah, vodka. <laughs> well, but, but they do have some wine there. But uh, yeah. I was brought over there to help them develop a Russian Roseanne show. Sony International um, huh. uses the scripts from different shows, and like they have every <laughs> every Bella's Raymond is still going on there years later. But and, don't they repurpose and recast? but use the same script. Well, that's what I was there for oh. to help and I don't speak a word of Russian but I was given a bottle of vodka a bottle of vodka <laughs> a translator my own apartment and oh, a driver because wow. it's scary I was just dropped off on the other side of the world right yeah. different times also zone not a great seen. place to be gay gay and Jewish I had many, and Jew, oh, yes. many friends said do not go you're not going to come back and there have been many horrible horrible stories of, of yeah. people attacking gays there and filming it and getting in their apartment and, and yeah. being really violent so how your I loved it. I dated there. I, oh. I had, once I kind of got over the fear of it, and I met wonderful, wonderful people to explain to them what the importance of Roseanne was, because they kept wanting to make it funny or funny. Why is it not funny? And I said, it's like real life. It's not your typical sitcom. <laughs> it, it was, you know, wonderful this things. Is the country things. where Chekhov right. comes from, and they don't yeah. understand dark humor. Oh, I guess I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> like what? what? Well, they have very broad humor. And I got to go to the Moscow Art Theater where all of Stanislavski and all that started. Wow. And it was so cool. I saw they were doing a production of Streetcar Named Desire. And I thought, well, it was good. Pick a show that I know the show so I could understand it because it was all in Russian. Right. And you're just sitting there and you're thinking, this is where like naturalism and acting all started. Because before that, it was all, you know, big and broad and presentation. Yeah. Exactly. And this was yeah. more, well, you guys know. How do you yell Stella in yeah. Russian? Well, that was really interesting. Oh, hey. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, that was, it was really cool to see that production. Wow. They I had bet. P- two pianos on the set. And oh. Was, the whole thing kept spinning around. It was, it was really Really cool. But I kept wondering, like, do they have accents or? But what? you can't really tell. So how do we bridge this age gap here? And I've been thinking about it because I feel like a lot of times now when I go for things, they want to look at how many followers you have. Are you on Snapchat? What do you? What web thing are you? Yeah, just on the breakdowns today, there was a role I was about to submit to, and they're like, "Don't even think about submitting if you don't have at least a hundred thousand Instagram followers." And I was like, "Seriously?" They didn't say that. Oh yes, right. in the breakdown on LA Casting, they said that. It, well, so your union should put a stop. They to that. should put a you stop should, to it. Yeah, you know, because they're now putting that you're not going to have age on your IMDb page, but you, they should not be able to ask. Them. Oh yeah, no, it's. It's getting more and more common. They want to make sure they already cast someone who already who they can ride on their coattails of whatever what, fame they've yeah. established online. But what's terrible is that there's already like a chasm between people that are older and technology. Mm-hmm. And if we're putting all of our focus on technology and how relevant are you in the technological age, how do people but that that's are older a fallacy didn't grow too. up with that? You look at George Takei. He has a huge, a massive online following. He does, and yeah. I mean, he was one of the first that was really out there and he's daily tweeting. I mean, maybe Maybe he has mm-hmm. people writing stuff for him, but he is really political and so great about it and, you know, going on Howard Stern and right. everything. So he is embracing. And I hope, I mean, that's what would be so great about having the show that we could demystify those ideas that they can't be, you know, older people can't do the technology. Right, right, right. Maybe one of them could not figure it out or not want to. Well, for me, it's more like that's the reaction from television executives. Like, that's what they're thinking. They're thinking right. like, oh, these people don't understand this and this is what we got to focus on. And this is a waste of time. And that's ageism right there. Is like we've, I, th- I feel like we've gotten away from these like universal stories that people really still crave. And instead of just chasing these likes and these quick snippets and how quick can this little thing happen and how can this hot girl walk in here and be like, oh, my boob fell out. And then some guy goes, I farted. And then like cut to, you know, That's Pepsi commercial. Oh, I just got so sad right there. <laughs> you know, but like, yeah. how do we, uh, then how do we still try and in- 
infuse a little bit of art and try and reach people and tell a story that people can connect to. And do people still want to connect? I don't even know anymore. Now you're just whining. Is no, this I'm whining. whining. You, I'm, just, you just sit behind that yeah. mic and whine. Can I you, actually think it's a great time. And there's so many people telling stories. And from so many wonderful points of view and in so many places. I mean, the fact that you guys are doing this and you're getting it out there. Right. And there's just so many, you know, online shows and web series. And we did our web yeah. series. Yeah, Skirt uh, Chasers. Skirt Chasers. With Shout Barry, out. Barry Bostwick and Elizabeth Keener and Meredith Barry Baxa. Barry Boss, like, like the, the Rocky. Yeah. Oh. yeah. How yeah. cool was he? He was oh. a Amazing. Uh, so cool. Uh, amazing. Yeah, you yeah. got to you put your arms we got around to hang, yeah, We got yeah. to act together. Yeah, I know. That's what so cool. was very busy. I know. It's huh? not my real. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> and the sweetest man. And and he did our little podcast. And we had Leah Delaria did a cover of a song for the theme song. And she yeah. did it all just for free. Right. Aww. And, we, you know, from Orange is the New Black. And she's yeah. an amazing singer if you don't know her. But you're so did. prolific, too. You're always creating I something. Can't stop, you man. can't stop. You're yeah. always doing a play. You're always putting something up. You're always well, creating and writing. Well, this last November, I was like, I can uh, either hide under my covers or get out. And right. now I, like, I'm about to start directing my fifth play of, of this right. year. And Which is amazing at? because you don't, you know, you've worked a lot on great shows. And it's not like... <laughs> but the fun thing about doing theater, as you know, is it's, it's not networks and executives. I don't have to wait for them to green yeah. light it. It's me saying, yes, it's me getting to pick the cast and the music and everything. I don't have to run it by 12 different people. They're not testing in front of, you mm-hmm. know, an audience in Atlanta. We, I I went to. Have you ever been to one of those tests things? Oh. You make a pilot, and then they, they oh, test yeah. oh, screen they it. Oh yeah, oh, they test screen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. god! People punching well, we little got buttons. To, yeah, we got to watch it, and it was a show I did on Lifetime called A Rita Rocks with Nicole Sullivan and oh, yeah. Tisha Campbell Martin. And in it, the daughter uh, says something like, um, "Sure, mm-hmm. uh, mom," about her older sister. She said the word vagina. <laughs> Well, someone in the test group said, I don't even let my doctor say the word vagina. What? And like, then you should go to another doctor. Or, yeah. uh, and oh, I, thought, and I, I got really up mad and I said, we're not taking the word out. And I, we can't chase one person in Atlanta to suddenly rewrite the whole script. Right. So, You're like, why are we listening to this one person in a focus room? But that's room? what happens. Yeah. Uh, so that's another reason why I love doing theater. So I would love to eventually be able to make money at doing yeah. theater. I know. I was and, just, I'm doing this yeah. play right now, too, yeah. at Bootleg. And it's been really really inspiring to just put something up and to be kind of creative and not if I could just make a little bit of money doing it yeah. it would be great. so we have to go to New York to do that yeah it's just theater is taken more seriously there but I I mean I live here I love here I would like to go back and forth and yeah. my goal with most with my plays is that there are very commercial pieces and so hopefully where are you other. putting your play up the Dory Theater it's uh, actually a Justin Tanner play do you know Justin Tanner uh, in the 90s mm-hmm. he wrote he wrote Pot Mom and he did like a oh, play yeah. every couple months he's a brilliant mm-hmm. writer in this play called Heartbreak Help, and it's about four women sharing a Joshua Tree motel room for a women's spiritual conference. Oh. And uh, two of them are mother and daughter, so you know, like, shit's going to happen in there. Um, so I have Melissa Peterman, again, and Marissa Jared Winoker, who won a Tony for Hairspray. What? Yeah, and I know. In no, a little really. 50-seat theater, we're going to do this. Nice. Amazing. And she's never done a play play. She's only done musicals oh. and uh, in New York. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. So we start rehearsals in a week. Cool. And then we go up in middle of September, yeah. and, and um, then I have a few other. Have, I've, I've just have a question. Have you ever written something not for an audience? Have you ever just written something just, just for myself? Just for yourself? Why? <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, have you ever I written keep my something? Journal. With, yeah, but you like yeah. yeah, like like a blog even. Like I yeah. keep my silly blog going just because I get a kick out of. But people read it. Some, but you have not that many. Uh, nobody reads my blog. Oh. Scrumptious gruel, you guys. Yeah, Look go, it go up. To it. No. <laughs> go um, to it. What do you write about? Yeah. Right now, I started as me keeping track of stuff I was baking, and then recently has devolved more into like wine writing. Writing. I, I did a whole series on the Beaujolais crew. When <laughs> I, when I went through a period where I was working really hard and being super interactive on other people's blogs and when I was writing for Hello Giggles so I think more people clicked on my bio and then I got maybe more hits but right now not that many people we read need my a blog. scandal let's, let's start something tonight yeah, yeah we need a scandal uh, okay. no but I mean like you were saying because you, that yeah, you write do, uh, plays for audiences I was just wondering have you ever written something purely because you just had to write it and you didn't oh, care yeah. if people liked it or not I want to be liked uh, yeah. but not all comedy I right. you know about my suicide notes play no mm-hmm. oh so not to turn this really sad no but I mean yeah, Five I mean, years yeah. ago, a uh, very, very, very good friend of mine took his life, and I, was, I felt just helpless and right. not understanding why. And so I just had this brainstorm of doing like a vagina.
vagina monologues, but with suicide notes. So wow. I started collecting them from like Kurt Cobain and, oh, shit. and war wow. veterans and LGBTQ kids and kids that were bullied. And I, they were, it was just hard to read them. Yeah, and I then bet. finally, Matt Quinn, who was produced a bunch of my plays, said, you're doing it for Fringe. Just get it together. You've got two months. Yeah. <laughs> and I did it. And it was an hour piece. And it was really intense, but really great for people to see it. Right. And then... And also cathartic, probably, for you. Yeah. Yes. It was difficult because after each show, I would get up and talk to the audience a bit. And I would say, how many people in the audience, raise your hand if you've been touched by suicide? And like over 90% did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then it's like a hush in the room as everyone went, oh my God. Right. And people didn't want to leave the theater. And then they would be talking out on the street. And yeah. So now, now I've retitled it to Right Before I Go. And we're going to do a huge benefit in New York City to kind of launch the piece yeah. in October. But my goal is to create a foundation like Vagina Monologues. When You know that when you do right. that play, the money goes into research and, and help for women. So this would be you know going into suicide prevention. So I'm hoping it will be done all over the world. So that, I want to see like, that. Yeah, you better too. see it. Yeah. I know. I really want to see uh, it. Some of the letters are just really, really, yeah. obviously yeah. intense. Um, yeah. There was one a transgender woman wrote on Facebook, put up there, and she attempted it a few times. I'm going to do it now. Yeah. In real time. Yeah. And then yeah. you see her friends write in. And so I had someone read that part. And then I had the other actors, Kate, don't do it. We're coming by. Uh, yeah. you know, and then you hear it. And, and I had someone reading the time. It's 445, 530. Right. And then 6 o'clock, too late. And it's just, I'm getting chill now. But yeah, I know. It's same. all <laughs> real words wow, of wow. these people. And then I wrote in between. Yeah. And I didn't know if people were going to respond or run out of the theater or just not even show up. So that was something I just knew I had to do yeah. Yeah. for myself. But the response was, uh, and from young people, they I had a lot of friends that have kids in high school and they were like, should I bring them? Uh, they were super yeah. cool and they would, one daughter took the program that had the um, suicide prevention number on it and called this girl from school the next day and said, I know you've been having some problems, can I come over? And the girl was like, no one's ever done this. And she was like, wow. you know, she could have saved this girl's life. Right, I mean, right, so right. if we can touch anybody, yeah, right. then, absolutely. Then, then I will be really, really happy. So I'm, I'm really excited about getting this up and going yeah. again. It's tough with comedy too because it's so direct. You know, you're like, line, do people laugh? No, change it. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. how do we kind of elicit that? Drama's so I, harder. Drama's harder, yeah. you know, and it, it can be more vulnerable in that way. And comedy can be vulnerable too. We can put stuff up with the most earnest intention and then have it fall flat. And audience, the audience changes too. Yeah, yeah, but, but I like is... combining it. Yeah, like this last play I wrote uh, called "Yes, Virginia" that Mindy Sterling. Oh yeah, uh, love. Got nominated for mm-hmm. an Emmy for I, our oh, web series. I know. Sex and Congratulations! Sex. I can't Lynn. believe that. So great. So uh, her and Ellie English are in this play called "Yes, Virginia," and it's about the relationship, kind of based on my mom and my longtime housekeeper. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mother started experiencing early dementia, and we didn't know how she could live alone anymore. And we said, well, if Virginia was still alive, they could kind of take care of each other. And so this was the basis of the play and so I was dealing with something really serious Mm -hmm. but really funny and human and uh, I feel like mm -hmm. humor is sort of the spoonful of sugar when I write about serious things like to work as much like sarcastic humor in there because like you kind of lure people in with the hi I'm laughing and then all of a sudden you're like and think about this and maybe not when your mind's been opened by being able to laugh about things then you're willing to be like oh okay I can be a little serious I can think about this I've said that for years when you're laughing you're just you're open and you're like Relax, yeah. and all these yeah. things come in. And through. like you're feeling some kind of joy, so you're in a better mood. You're going to be, yeah, more open to things. So. Mm-hmm. You're not shut know. down and closed I off. I thought I was the only one that thought that. I love that no. you like verbalize it in like the exact way that I verbalize it in I've my head. I've written things. I wrote a play and I get starts off really silly and then at the end like there's stuff. But I felt like for what I wanted to tackle, it felt right and it felt like it would be more effective to like get people laughing and then be like, and think about this. Mm-hmm. But in our life, we are laughing one minute and then we can be crying. Crying the yeah. next, and, and that's why. And I loved movies like that. Yeah, you know, as I was growing up, like things like Terms of Endearment, it was funny. <laughs> and for ordinary people, there was actually some humor, but also yeah. really touching and laughing through the pain. Yeah. So and, and Roseanne did that. So I, I oh yeah, that, that's why I, sure. I love that combination. Speaking of pain, and speaking of pain, pain you ready to be uh, tested? Oh no! Yeah, I is... just got like a really great tasting note on this wine. Oh, I got yeah. um, a watermelon Jolly Rancher. Anyone else get watermelon I think Jolly I got Rancher? That too. That's good. Oh, yeah. yeah, I like that. Uh, oh yeah, I was. I was going to say the one thing we didn't analyze was the finish, the oh, length of it. Shall we do Watermelon that? Jolly Rancher. Oh, it's not too long a finish. I feel like, it Shuts I down a little bit. Yeah. What do you mean by finish? How long and how it Evolves. finishes. changes like in your mouth? You, after you swallow it, you'll still be tasting and feeling and, and sensing things. And sometimes some wines, you take a swallow and like for the next yeah. minute, you're like, all wow. these different sensations come up. And this one's a little shorter. It may just be there's so much.
much like sweetness. I don't yeah, know. or it, it could just be the acidity too, because a lot of times like too much acidity will kind of zap yeah. all that out of it. Um, but no, we have a lightning round. Right? Yeah. We're gonna ask oh, no. you questions. Oh, and you want, done. What do you want? Like one word answers? Uh, you just can go for whatever, whatever. you yeah. think the answer is. Well, let's start with the one question. Sean and I came up with these questions separately, but we both one of them. We both wrote the same thing. We I did. So you, I mentioned yeah. the six levels of sugar sweetness and how they make wines from them. We want to know: Do you know how ice vine is made, or even what it is? What is ice vine? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to guess? Should we say what they call it in Canada? What do they call it in Canada? Ice wine. <laughs> Ice wine. Ice wine. Ice wine. E I S W. Is it German? Yeah. E-I-S- it is German. Yeah. Ice wine. It's a type of wine. What kind of wine is it? Really cold. Like, when would you drink this wine in a meal? For dessert. Yes. yes. It's a dessert Yay! wine. Yay! You got it. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. How many points does it get for that? 30? A lot. 175. Oh, okay. You're wow. getting 175 okay. points for oh, that. Yeah, they let the grapes hang out on the vine long enough to get frozen and when it, then they crush them while they're still frozen and so the juice the sugary juice of the wine gets pressed out but the ice stays the water stays behind in the in the press and so you just have this extra concentrated really pure not overly ripe but just very pure grape sugar must must yeah <laughs> must the must yeah. yeah basically when you freeze it yeah like it freezes out the the water yeah okay <laughs> cuz you know water exists in three states Ice. So they <laughs> liquid. So when they press it, ironically, the ice is taken out of ice wine. It's just the juice. That's crazy. Oh my god. Yeah, yes. so you always know it's ice wine because they freeze the grapes. They harvest them later when they're frozen. Yeah. And then they smush them. And, and then they make wine out of it. As I mentioned, it's the next to the only higher sugar ripeness in, in grapes they use and is for the trokin beer and was like <laughs> which yeah. is usually betritized, which means it has noble rot, but these grapes are, are not we're not drinking ice wine. Why am I just drinking? the bottle um <laughs> but no, i find it no one saw you gesturing but just <laughs> but i only understand like every fourth word of hers <laughs> oh because because okay. it, it gets i don't know what yeah. you're talking I'm about i'm sorry no it's wonderful all it's the very, wine people very sexy like, but yeah, so that's that's ice ice wine. It's also very smart. Yes, ice wine made of frozen grapes. No, that's ice wine made of frozen grapes. So and that's it. Sweet. But you, but you got it right. She's smart and pretty. She's smart and pretty, <gasps> oh, guys. Oh my go. god. She's not pretty and smart. So, yeah, She's smart and, and pretty. pretty. Yeah. Nor am I smart, smart, but pretty, pretty yeah. or pretty uh-huh. but smart. But shockingly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Stan's been writing lines for you for years. I see. <laughs> I'd, li- I'd like to. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. to. Um, I love it. Next one, Ellen. You want to go with one? Oh sure. Because I just wanted to say this word, which I'm gonna. Butcher, what does Gutsab Fulong mean? You see the translation of it on this bottle. So take a look tell at the much. words in English on this bottle and tell me what you think, which one you think in German would be Gutsab Fulong. I'm the saying state that wrong. Bottle. Yeah. What? Oh my God. Are you uh, serious? Oh my God. Brilliant. Wow. 501. You have 501 I'm, points for that. I'm smart, but pretty. All of the above. All of the above. Yeah. Okay. Smart. <laughs> and whatever. You're like, please whatever don't call me smart. Call I me just, pretty. I just want to be pretty. You just want to be pretty. pretty. Seriously. Yeah. At this point in my it's life. It's different yeah. struggles. At, at all points, I just want to. The different wanted. genders, we all have different struggles. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There we oh, go. Whatever. We're no. all gorgeous in this room. Okay. Mm-hmm. And smart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, last one. You ready? Oh no, pressure's on. You're you're two for three here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What <sighs> is another name for the grape Spotsburgunder? What is a synonym for the grape Spotsburgunder? It's a very popular I think it's just variety. Spotsburgunder, or is it Con- Spot? Oh yeah, Con- no, it, it's Concord. Spot- no. <laughs> like Nothing a table more. grape. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Welch is. Welch is, yes. Sunny D. <laughs> you got a comedy person here. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, you're right. It's Spot Burgunder. It's not Spot. Sorry. It's Spot Burgunder. I was to I was just well, I'm throwing, I, it, I'm my, throwing my soul of an S in there. Uh, Spot Burgunder. Spot Burgunder. Spot Burgunder. Yeah. Can you give us like a... Uh, this... Like we'll give you a multiple choice. Yeah, I do multiple choice. Is it... A. Merlot. B. Corvina. <laughs> That's a weird <laughs> Or C. Pinot Noir. Pick the sexiest bum, one. What's the first, what's the word? Pinot Noir. Yay! Yay! No. No. Perfect. Perfect. Right. Perfect score. I mean, and for bonus uh, bonus no, points, oh, what yeah. is, what's Pinot Gris and what's Pinot Blanc? Because those are also Burgunders in German. Ooh. 
Grauburgunder for Pinot Gris I don't know this and Weissburgunder for Pinot Blanc, which literally means like white grape. White grape. Okay. Grape. White grape. grape. At well, least I think Burgunders. You... I'm obsessed with grapes, by the way. If you, uh, people come to my house, they look in my refrigerator. Grapes. Do you I put have... them in the freezer? Because they're delicious. That's out of good the too. Yeah. That's good too. Mm. Yes, but I, I like the green. I have green, a bowl of green, a bowl of pur- dark purple, and all the red ones. Always. Always. Wow. Stan, I, I never know. knew that. Seated or non? No. Non. non. Come on. Don't. I don't know. Maybe you like. Yeah, I was going to say, don't make yeah. it work for it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it being a very meditative practice and they're peeling no, your grapes. but then I feel bloated and fat after eating, but they're so really? tasty. Yes, they're, good they're good for you. Yeah. They're so good for the digestion. They good. They're good are to they? eat and they're good to drink. Yes. Mm-hmm. Good for digestion. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> on that note, Sam, thank you so much no, wait, for coming. No, wait, we have one the... more question. We have another question. It's the one we don't know the answer to. Oh, I always forgot my own show. You came up with this question. Ask it. <laughs> I, I just forgot. got really whiny. This is a fun question. Um, just what's bringing you some joy in your life right now? What's bringing me joy? Yeah, mm-hmm. what's bringing you joy? And it could be anything. Big, small, little. You're going to think it's corny. No. No. But it's like hanging out with people like you. Oh. It's been really that's sweet. That's so corny. Really. That's I so that's sweet. I just, I, it's I really giving like us it. joy. <laughs> We're br- you brought us joy. Oh. Yeah. That joy brought us joy. Oh. We're so glad to have you on the show. Yeah, this was so, so awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Love you. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. We'd just like to thank a lot of people. We, yeah. we have so many good people. We have wine people. So many people to thank in our heart. We have people who make us art. Thomas Strocky. Thank you, Thomas Strocky. Thank you, Dr. America, for our theme. Thank you, Dr. America. Thank you, Covell and Greg Condes. Thank you, Covell and Greg Condes. Good night, Moon. <laughs> good night, Moon. I was, just, I was having fun just repeating you. Good night, Moon. <laughs> Good, Good night. night, John Paul. <laughs> Good night, Ma. <laughs> um, thank you, Shelby, for being cute. Thank you, Shelby, for being cute. Um, uh, oh, thank you, UCB. Yeah, thank Good you, night, UCB. UCB. Good night, UCB. We're walking out of here for now, but we'll be back at you next week with uh, more people. Dave yeah, with, with the lovely Dave Holmes. Um, yeah. Tell your friends, guys. Subscribe, share, link. Oh, yeah, we forgot to say all that. Yeah. If yeah. we see you in person, ask us for a snazzy new business card. We have sexy... Heavy, we got the good stuff for we you. We got the good stuff. Ellen got the good stuff this time. Well, every time. But <laughs> <laughs> I like to go all out. Yeah. Um, thanks for listening, guys. See you and talk to you soon. Bye. I just drink wine. I don't fuck with my I just drink wine. I don't fuck with men and I just drink wine. I don't fuck with coffee mates. I just drink wine. Red, white, or say, don't touch me, motherfucker, I'm a Somali yate.